Most men on earth think they are free. The reason for this is that they have been sold an idea about what freedom is. Because of the process of socialization, most people believe more in the beliefs that they've been sold than they believe in their own internal guidance system. As long as they live in alignment with the beliefs that they've been sold, they feel like they have freedom. But what if I told you that the beliefs that you've been sold are, in fact, your own prison? What if I told you that the thoughts that you've been thinking, the actions you've been taking, all a byproduct of these beliefs you've been sold, are the jail bars to your perfect personal jail cell? When you are not living free, your life is a rat cage, and even the most awakened people on earth here are not free. Their rat cages are simply bigger, more elaborate, and they escape from time to time. Consider that all people on earth have a rat cage, a rat cage tailor made just for them. Consider that a rat cage is anything that keeps you apart from what you genuinely want. Consider that a rat cage is anything that keeps you apart from who you really are. Consider that anything could act as a jail bar in your own rat cage, and consider that the very things that set you free from your rat cage once can now be the very things that keep you in it. When you ask me why do we stay inside this rat cage even when we know we're not free, my answer for you is attachment. Attachment is essentially identification. Anytime you see something as yours, part of you, something you like, you identify with it. Now, anything that happens to that thing is treated as if it's happening to you. Now, the things that we believe preserve us and preserve our well-being are the things that we have the most attachment to. So, let's say that you have a 9-to-5 job and that 9-to-5 job makes you absolutely miserable. However, that's how you get money and you think money is the reason that you have well-being and that your self is preserved. You're attached to the money. And so you stay in that job regardless of how much hell it causes you. You stay in that job regardless of how much it prevents you from your own expansion. The reason you do this is because you're identified and attached to some aspect of that job. And so you stay inside your rat cage. The thing about this universe is that you are an extension of it. You are indivisible from it because you are a part of it, quite literally. For this reason, Source, or what we have been calling God or the universe at large, is incapable of not loving you because of what love actually is. To understand what love is, feel free to watch my video titled, What is Love? But the thing to understand about this is that because the universe loves you, because the universe can't help but love you, because you're a part of it, it prioritizes one thing above all else, and that's expansion. Because it prioritizes its expansion, it prioritizes individual expansion more so than any other aspect of life. It will never cease to help you continue to expand. The universe is after expansion because expansion is the vehicle for self-realization, which is really what this universe is after. It wants to know itself. Now, think about expansion. It is a moving outward. It is the exact opposite of imprisonment. Therefore, imprisonment is the ultimate enemy to expansion. So what does that mean? It means that this universe is going to set you free at any cost. It is going to arrange all the circumstances, people, places, and events that will set you free on the path of your own expansion. That doesn't sound like such a bad thing, and ultimately, at the highest dimension of this universe, it is not a bad thing. It's a very good thing. However, what about attachment? Anything you're attached to, once it's taken from you, will be experienced as pain, as loss, a loss of self. So if you're attached to something that keeps you back from your expansion, you experience pain when you're set free. Anything that holds you back from your growth on a mental, emotional, and physical level is going to be targeted by the universe for demolition, so to speak. 
Because of the strength of your rat cage, the bills to pay, the mouths to feed, the reputation to uphold, the people to not let down, you stayed stuck while desiring freedom. And so the universe heard the call to be set free. When a person really desires a radical restructuring, they want a fresh new start, not an alteration of what currently exists. Because of this, it will introduce everything that will break down the bars of your rat cage. Any time you are identified and attached to something that's taken from you, you experience it as pain. So using the previous example, if you're attached to your 9-to-5 job, imagine the universe sees that the job is holding you back and brings you the circumstances to get you fired. You've been set free from the rat cage bar of your job. But because of your attachments to it, you may now be in terror about having enough money and feeling bad about yourself because you were rejected for not being good enough. The universe will never stop for love of you, stripping down the bars of your own rat cage, but we have been collectively, subconsciously, unconsciously, asking for a large shift within the collective consciousness of mankind. And the universe is gearing up, in the process of destroying this rat cage, for all of mankind. This process is a bit like a forest fire for the collective. Now why do I use the analogy of the forest fire? Because those of us who understand a little bit about science know that a forest fire cleanses the soil and actually makes it more fertile for new growth. Now this is exactly what the universe is intending to do right now because of how much we have collectively desired freedom within the human race. Freedom which our own society prevents. It is a demolition of the things that humans in general are attached to but that simultaneously halt our expansion. Now these forest fire periods in humankind are not particularly easy for us to experience because when the universe demolishes the rat cage, we are still attached to plenty of things within that rat cage. And so we experience suffering as a result of the rat cage being demolished. It is not uncommon during these forest fire periods when our own expansion has been halted by something that we ourselves have become attached to. We feel like our life is collapsing around us, and for this reason, I am going to tell you today that I have a message. The time has come for you to set yourself free of your own rat cage far before it is targeted by this universe for demolition. I know that you have plenty of things that you want that are outside your own personal rat cage for now. Perhaps you've been putting them off for the future, waiting for circumstances to change so that you can not be attached to something here and instead go in the direction of that thing you want. And I'm going to tell you that that time is not going to come. There is not going to be a slow transition. And so now is the time, quite literally, to go for anything that is outside that rat cage. Now is the time to focus on and face your attachments. Don't put off those things you want to do for one more second. Do it before the rat cage collapses around you. Do not let the universe have an excuse to crash it for you. Think of it this way. If there is no rat cage in your life, there will be nothing for this universe to crash and nothing for it to burn down. We are headed for a collective cleansing of the human shadow. Now we will be cleansing the human shadow by virtue of becoming aware of our own individual shadows. Most of our pervasive attachments are in fact contained in the shadow of our own conscious mind. They are subconscious to us. It is not that this stuff is new, it's been going on in a hidden way forever, but now it has been given permission to come to the surface into plain view so we can both love it and lovingly change it. Because so much of what is holding you back from your own expansion is what is contained within your own shadow, I suggest you watch my video on YouTube titled, What is Shadow Work? What if I told you there is a part of your being, a part of you that can never be imprisoned, a part of you that is free without exception? A part of you that cannot be fooled by the aspect of you that tells you you're free when you really aren't. What if I told you that this aspect of you, like a North Star, continues to call you in the direction of freedom and can't let you lie to yourself when you tell yourself that you're free? The good news is that this universe will continue to show you how you're not free because expansion is its number one priority. It will never stop confronting you with the things that are holding you back from what you want and who you really are. This means you don't have to try hard to find the ways you're imprisoned in your life. You just have to notice the feeling of being prevented. Being prevented registers in your body as pain. It doesn't feel good to your being to be prevented from anything, regardless of what that thing is. For this reason, when you feel pain, it's a good opportunity 
for you to ask yourself, what is it right now that I know that I'm wanting? And to the opposite side of that, what is preventing me from that? Whenever you feel that feeling of being prevented, there is something that is holding you back from your expansion, like a jail bar that is part of your own rat cage. And your prerogative is to figure out what that jail bar actually is. Whether it's a belief or a pattern or a thing, you have to look at two things. Number one, what that feeling is letting you know that you want. Number two, the elements of prevention involved. Feel free to involve other people in the process of becoming aware of what specifically is preventing you. For example, if I feel pain when I get into a fight with my partner, I can stop at that moment and ask myself, what am I wanting right here and now? Perhaps the answer is to feel close to my partner. Then I watch my thoughts. I see what thoughts are distancing me from my partner. Those thoughts are preventing me from what I want. I can then work on those thoughts directly or deliberately focus on thoughts that bring me closer to my partner. I can then look at my actions. What am I doing or not doing that is preventing me from being close to my partner? If I discover those, I can take different actions. It seems easier than it actually is because usually the jail bars of our own rat cage are contributed to and created by multiple things. It also sounds easier than it actually is because changing anything takes great courage. Wherever there is attachment, there is terrible fear. So it takes bravery to figure out these bars of your rat cage so as to take them down. Put all of your attention into what makes your heart sing and into the places that call you. Pay very close attention to the guidance you receive directly from your own intuition. Follow it wherever it tells you to do something different or go somewhere different. If you want to help people lovingly, not desperately, at this point in time, the best way to help them is to help them recognize their own rat cage and to help them find ways to set themselves free from their own rat cage. But be aware that you can't choose freedom for someone else, nor can you dissolve someone else's attachment to the bars of their own rat cage. You may find that certain people in your life are, in fact, the bars to your rat cage. They may also be the very thing that's going to set you free from it. Oftentimes, the seeds of both are contained in one being. Set yourself free so that the universe at large has nothing left to set you free from. For this reason, I invite you to ask two questions. What is it that you want the very most? And what is it that is preventing you from that? The time has come to set yourself free from the bars of your own rat cage. The only question left is, what is your personal rat cage? Have a good week.